Hello folks, and thanks for joining me on the Freemasonic Knowledge Channel where we give away free Masonic knowledge. Today's reading is going to be the origin of Freemasonry. This is actually one of my, see now the cat starts, every time the cat starts messing with me, so you guys hear some little stuff going on and I try to just like this last the last reading half the reading the cat was messing with me the whole time so anyway this one is a reread um, that used to be in parts is the origin of Freemasonry it is a lecture delivered at the Lodge of Instruction held under the warrant of the Victoria Lodge number no. four in Dublin on Monday the 2nd of February 1857 by one Robert Longfield QC to the Master Wardens and Brethren of the Victoria Lodge number no. 4 Dublin this lecture on the origin of Freemasonry delivered in their Lodge of Instruction and by them deemed worthy of publication is respectfully dedicated to or by their faithful brother Robert Longfield February 14th 1857 The Origin of Freemasonry The subject which I have selected for this evening's lecture is the origin of Freemasonry. A theme will, which will at once, I should hope, invite the attention of each of my hearers, members themselves of that mysterious and widely spread body. Every brother has indeed on his initiation into the craft gained some little insight into that which traditionally at least has for many ages been handed down to us as the origin of that fraternity of which we must confess we are now the scarcely recognized representatives. But few, perhaps, have considered how much truth is hid in our legends and how realities have been converted into symbols. Few have reflected whether our pretended ancient descent is not a mere modern invention or whether the present appearance of the order in the transition state of a mystery corrupted from its purer source in its descent through the ages. But your presence here in this lodge of instruction convinces me that all apathy on the subject of our organization is past and that you are anxious to increase the knowledge, the respectability, the zeal, and the utility of the fraternity of Freemasons. The subject I have chosen has been discussed by many learned and ac or learned and acute writers. They have endeavored to pierce the dark gloom under which at one time was hid almost impenetrably the origin of Freemasonry and probably and the probably or probably the era of its commencement of the labors of those who learned the sagacious writers who I shall or writers I shall largely avail myself claiming no credit for any singularity or profundity of my views but only for the diligence with which I have gleaned from others and sought to extract from their speculations suggestive food for your reflection on this interesting topic which might also excite the desire in your minds for deeper and more extended research. I have in truth but endeavored to compress into the space of an evening sitting the results derived from a larger and more accurate works connected with the long debated question, the origin of the order. One of the chief objects in such an inquiry as the present is to ascertain if there exists in the secrets and ceremonies or tenets of the craft any evidence of antiquity, the wisdom or grandeur of the founders. Are Freemasons a collection of mere convivial individuals, a club in short, united by some secret signs but for useless objects? and who would therefore in vain seek to graft some appearance of excellent on intrinsic worthlessness there are they indeed men but condescending to be amused with trifles fit only for children or are their traditions properly linked with the wondrous fame of the past world the vital words and deeds of minds whom neither time nor change contain traditions old and dark 
And have they preserved amidst much that is new, idle, and mere modern adaptation, some traits of the almost superhuman wisdom and excellence of their foundation? Each true mason who hears me will, I am sure, hope that the latter may prove to be the case, and will himself aid in the effort by uniting energy, zeal, and honesty of purpose and action to elevate the body into that place in the social scale which is his belief, if not his rational conviction, tells him it once enjoyed. Degenerate worth or degenerate worth may be restored. Nothing can change folly to wisdom. Symptoms of that probable restoration to ancient glory I already perceive in the earnest desire for improvement and mental culture manifested by the brethren generally. With those few preliminary observations designed to awaken your attention and not to advance any particular theory or peculiar theory, I shall now attempt to throw some light upon the origin of Freemasonry. But let me first ask your indulgence if, if any remarks which I shall make, it may seem as if I spoke in depreciatory terms of our order. Such is not my intention, and you will, I hope, kindly attribute or attribute to some other motive, whatever may not appear laudatory. Even censor, however sparingly applied, may often prove as effectual as an instrument of regeneration as unmerited praise. I would also ask your brotherly forbearance if I might appear too openly to touch on the secrets of the craft. I have indeed diligently endeavored to avoid this error, but if I should, notwithstanding, have fallen into it, I shall gladly receive the fraternal correction. Sit mihia fas adida loquai is my guiding wish. Let in, you know, you can look that up if you want. Just copy it or into your Google. Let each brother now for a moment recall to his mind the ceremony of his initiation and reflect on his newly adopted name and his objects. How wide the difference, nay, how wholly inconsistent with the objects in his, this name. There are lawyers who know little of law, and we are assured that there are physicians of no value. But, though, but both those classes at least profess some acquaintance with the science whence their name is derived. With modern Freemasons this is not the case. The science of Masonry, if they know anything of it, has been learned not from the traditional lore retained by old elder brethren, and thence not communicated to the ignorant and blinded candidates for admission but altogether independently of this and rather in despite of it think also on the moral and religious instruction afforded after your initiation by reference to symbols the object lessons as i may term them on the level square and compass those two points dwelt on even cursorily will prepare the mind to believe that the name at one time really indicated the nature and objects of the society and that the symbolical use of the implements of the craft was many ages posterior to the day in date to the actual any other view would appear to me rather like the tale of saint patrick teaching the mystery of the trinity by reference to the three leaved shamrock or the illustration of immortality of the soul from the different stages of insect existence, as grub, chrysalis, and butterfly. Admiral Bull, incidentally, as arguments, but which no sane men would ever think of perpetuating by mysteries and brotherhoods. The square, the level, and the compass were implements in actual use, and of vast importance in the science of masonry practiced in the earlier ages of the craft. The science was lost, and they retained, well, it wasn't lost, but anyway, they retained their importance only as symbols and emblems. Just as formerly the title Duke Marquis des designated an officer of trust, but are now empty titles of heraldry. This consideration has always satisfied me from the vast and undoubted antiquity of Freemason in some form.
It was to me incredible that grave men, possessed of such religious culture and habit of thought, as the very initiation into our body supposes, could have been capable of organizing a fraternity of true believers, whose only distinction was the illustration by visible external symbols of those eternal truths which affect us as moral beings. This is not indeed one of those proofs. Or, I mean, this, yeah, that's what it says. This is not indeed one of those proofs which would alone be deemed sufficient of the indisputable antiquity and more recent modification of the mysteries of our order. It is, however, the best preparation for a calm investigation by those gleams of light shed by the earlier histories of the world, of the probable origin of a society, once perhaps, as the name would import, the secret and mysterious repositories of all the valuable knowledge connected with architecture now actually retaining nothing connected therewith same the name except the name in other words now is it not a little singular that the earliest association of mankind of which we read is one for the purpose of architecture on a gigantic and uh, I'm going to say ominously audacious scale. I think that's what that word is supposed to be. Ominously audacious scale, which is res resulted indeed in confusion, but which even still, according to the opinion of enlightened travelers, has left traces of its stupendous labors in the mound called the Burz Nimrod on the plain of Babylon. A lot of misspelling in this, so bear with me, folks. <laughs> uh, we read in Genesis chapter 6 or chapter 11 that um, the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass that they, as they journeyed from the east, that they had found a plain in the land of Shinar, and that they dwelt there. And they said, To go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach to heaven. And they had brick for stone, and slime they had for mortar. I need not minutely what dwell on the subsequent fate of this tower, the confusion of tongues, and the consequent dispersion of mankind. It is only necessary to remark that you have a mere memorable instance of the early association of masons for building a city and tower of vast dimensions. This plainly supposes community of idea, thought, and action, arrangements made that some gangs should prepare bricks, others lay them, some skilled laborers, attendants, unskilled, def definite plans, precision instructions and orders, masterminds to direct, and uh, subordinates to execute the growing works, and all so united and linked, and probably marked by such distinctions of dress and emblems as were readily recognizable, that the ruling impulse, let us build a city, could be acted upon harmoni harmoniously by all. This boastful and profane attempt to ascend to heaven provoked the direct intervention of the Lord, which caused the general dispersion of the human race. Thus, long before the time of Abraham and the 1,000 years before the building of Solomon's temple, the oldest and most authentic record of, cre of the creation notices the confederacy of Masons. So by claim, he's claiming that the Masons go clear back to the building of the Tower of Babylon. Now, we know uh, the, the history of Masons with Hiram Abiff and uh, Solomon's temple and all that. He's taking it back to the very beginning. Okay. You go lay down. Okay. Lay down or I'm going to squirt you with water. <laughs> Alright. I'm sorry folks. Okay. So the dispersion of mankind. Which is probably by families or tribes. Or those identical in one language. Radiated from Babel as the center and east and west and on the east to India and on the west to Syria, Greece, Egypt and Italy, it would only it would be only natural to expect that the myriads dispersed by this building folly or wickedness would exhibit in the countries whether they migrated some traces of their early Masonic uh, predilections and skill. And it is indeed remarkable that very shortly after this event, buildings of enormous magnitude and evincing great skill 
and uh, scientific knowledge of masonry were constructed in all the countries more immediately connected with the scene of the dispersion of man. It is only necessary to glance at a few, the remote antiquity and vastness of which will be at once remembered, the pyramids, the labyrinth of Egypt, the Cyclopean buildings of Tyrans in Greece, uh, Voltaire in Italy, the walls of Tyre, or Tyre, uh, uh, the pyramids of H Hindostan all attest the early prevalence of the science and ruling spirit of masonry derived from some great originals and spread abroad by some memorable event which might cause it to be a common idea pervading countries so far remote and unconnected how then was this architectural skill and unity of design preserved and propagated at a time before the use of letters was supposed to have been revealed to mankind. And indeed, until writing was common, there was only one mode of perpetuating any high degree of knowledge requiring to make it practical to the cooperation and skill of numbers, and which was not like painting, sculpture, or poetry, or solid, uh, solitary art, and that was by institution of certain societies or mysterious brotherhoods of those possessed of the science, and into which persons from time to time might be initiated, and who thus, by a sort of corporate succession, never being wholly old or entirely new, could be kept alive or ke uh, could keep alive by authentic tradition all the knowledge and the arts of the founders. Indeed, uh, it has been well observed that, that before the invention of letters that mankind may be said to have been perpetually in their infancy, as the arts of one age of the country generally died of their pre uh, pro possessors. Okay, I'm going to pause there for a second because of two comments. Uh, commentary. One, um, the Tower of, you know, the, he's, he's going off a of pretense that the Tower of Babel was a actual stone tower that they, a bunch of people tried to get together and actually build. The story is a metaphoric story. It's symbolic. And he's totally skipping that over the part and, and, and making the story into like a real event. Um, for one, so just pointing that out. And, uh, then the other thing basically he, he makes a comment he, he's trying to single out Freemasonry as the only organized uh, sect uh, that existed in those times okay and one he's not talking about a time that was actually before writing we had writing maybe not in the form of the you know, Queen's English language today but they had writing, they had letters, they had numbers. Uh, so I don't know what he's really saying there because without letters and numbers and writing, you can't build a Tower of Babylon. You can't build pyramids. You can't build anything. Okay? Um, oh, I mean, sure, you can stack up some blocks. But anyway, and especially organized with uh, many men and sections and, and organized work groups, etc., like he's talking about. So these are just some small flaws I'm noticing as I'm reading this. Um, and also uh, the groups. There were, there were uh, they called them guilds back then. And maybe before then they might have had a different name for them. But every different uh, profession had guilds. Um, the same difference today would be like a modern union, so to speak. Only they were run a little bit differently. <laughs> anyway, okay, so we uh, back to the reading. Uh, in Egypt and Hindustan, the early rulers tried to prevent this tendency of the arts to perish by forcing the son to follow the trade of the father, and that the knowledge acquired by anyone might be preserved by lineal succession. The corporate succession of uh, associated craftsmen was much more effectual to this end, we find, uh, than in ancient history traces of early existence of scientific associations or trades. Okay, yeah, trade unions, as I may term them. And these associations were quickly invested with additional grandeur and importance derived from the invention or adoption of peculiar 
your religious or mystic ceremonies with which they were contrived to guard and connect their purely secular knowledge. Of these societies, one of the most important were the Estruscans or Estruscans. Uh, you know, I've heard that thing, that word pronounced many different ways. So, think of it what you will. Uh, a people, anyway, they were a people that were widely celebrated for their scientific requirements and their mysterious religious rites and ceremonies. Who long before the building of Rome? Sorry, I keep switching my mic around here. It might be making some noise too. Inhabited that part of Italy known as Tuscany. Okay. And uh, their very name is by Mechelet and others, perhaps rather fanciful, derived from the word tourist or tower, and indicating that they were a nation of builders, and the remains now existing of their labors in this very ancient and ingenious people prove how well merited was their name, if indeed derived from this Latin word. But anyone who considers the history of mankind, the proneness, uh, to association and to mystery and the prevalence of those ancient huge buildings to which I have referred requiring the exertion of scientific skill and cooperation of numbers must at once feel disposed to admit the probability at least of the existence of the earliest ages of the world the immediate post diluvian times of associated bodies of architects and also from the known jealousy of all possessing a peculiar skill or science, the probability, too, of those associations keeping sacred this knowledge from all but a select and privileged few. <laughs> Only a select and privileged Even that, that still exists. Okay, pause again. That still exists today. That's why Freemasonry is still uh, strong today. Because not every man uh, aspires to be the best he can. Not every man aspires to be something more than himself as we can see with crime etc etc in, in in our country in our society today so these knowledges yeah they're they're reserved for those men who are willing to take on the burdens of and responsibilities um not all men are willing to do that and so they form groups to themselves and uh you c you can't fault them for that because that is how knowledge is preserved um, it's just a fact. It is what it is. So it is, however, unnecessary to rest on probability only, as we can trace from history the early existence of associations united by secret mysteries, jealously preserved from the vulgar, using certain religious and ceremonies and mystic symbols, and bearing much res resemblance to the present rites of Freemasonry. And once such societies originated, the adoption by craftsmen of similar mysteries, rites, and ceremonies would rapidly follow and so it happens in each in, uh, ancient nation distinguished for its early culture and architectural science there existed mysterious brotherhoods of high consideration requiring initiation by secret and appalling ceremonies guarding the admission to the fraternity of the most rigid scrutiny and some of these associations originated twelve or fourteen hundred years before the christian era excuse me truth that's true and uh, most of them were priesthoods. Um, so, and that goes all across it. Whether you're talking about Aztec, Mayan, uh, you know, this side of the world, or if you're talking about over there in Egypt and stuff, and those side of the world. Either way, you had the priests, the original priesthoods that came from Babylon, and kept the secrets. And they were, uh, you know, a, a rigid secret group. Um, so, and some of these associations uh, before the Christian era and some centuries before the building of Solomon's temple, a few may be mentioned. The chief were those initiated into the Illusionian mysteries, the Etruscan, the Kabiri, the priests of Egypt, like I was just mentioning, and the disciples of Zoroaster and uh, Pythagoras, or Pythagoras. <laughs> 
and the short count of the Illusionian uh, mysteries, uh, which have generally been esteemed as the most ancient and most uh, closely resembling Freemasonry, may prove interesting. Each of you will for himself readily compare them to with most of our craft, and note the resemblance or difference. After a long ceremony of preparatory purification, say that real fast five times, uh, continued during nine days, and the candidate for initiation was admitted at night into a vast building. By a series of mechanical contrivances, he was apparently exposed to the terrors of an earthquake, and amid imitations of thunder or lightning, sudden darkness beset him, and hideous noises were heard around. After enduring much calculated to strike terror or arrest attention, he was introduced into the sanctuary of the goddess Isis or Ceres. Same difference which was dazzling lit, dazzlingly lit up lit up right light he kind of the light bringer right you follow me and he was then instructed in the meaning of the sacred symbols presented to his view significant passwords were then communicated to him by which he might recognize the brethren and most solemn oath was administered that he should never indulge or should indulge the mysteries in which he was then instructed to the uninitiated. His instruction in the mysteries was by successive stages or steps. Some have supposed that the members of this society were taught the unity of the divine being. However, this, however, is denied by others. It, but it is generally admitted that a morality much superior to that prevailing amongst the masses of the nation, and connected with a belief in a system of future rewards and punishments, and of immortality of the soul, was inculcated. These, inculcated means indoctrinated people, means forced, basically, it's a, it's, this is, uh, you know, uh, these mysteries were in high repute, and the greatest stages and philosophers were proud of their initiation. Because then they, see, they, they set themselves above, they try to say, oh, we're normal men, but we set ourselves above normal men, because we're, we're, we're the, like I said, the men that are responsible, the ones that are holding the knowledge. Um, and with that, you can't, I mean, people like that, you, they, it, the ego thing goes along with it. You know, uh, for most people that's natural, unless unless you've been broken and and you don't have an ego anymore, you know what I mean, or a real mellow ego, not egotistical type ego like a Donald Trump, uh, then it's then it's a natural part of humanity. Uh, egos have to be broken. You have to be broke, and the Lord will break you. <laughs> All right, we have thus then proof of the early existence of the two sources from which Freemasonry would naturally originate, of the general association, the great school of Eastern architects, and of organized societies, organized societies distinguished by peculiar knowledge, by signs and, and symbols, and by bound by solemn sanctions not to reveal their secrets to those not initiated. The adoption by the one body of signs, symbols, initiations, and mysteries similar to those of the, of the other was so natural as almost certain to take place at a very early era period of the coexistence of the two societies, the associated craftsmen and the associated mystery men. This tendency of all trades or professions to form separate societies and to protect their knowledge and the rights by initiation into secrets by passwords of recognition uh, is uh, not of modern date, but is coeval, coeval almost with history, uh, and indeed arises from the very nature of man. So look at all them spelling errors. Um, the jealousy, too, with the which artistic secrets were guarded, and the all unlawful rivalry checked, may be illustrated by reference to the old fable of Daedalus, De Daedalus, Today, day. Um. <laughs> uh, which perhaps has been in another light familiar to us from our pleasant schoolboy days. This Dedalus, who was uh, supposed to have lived more than 3,000 years since, and whom some seek to identify with Tool Cain, was an artist widely famed for his great ingenuity and skill in architecture and other kindred sciences. 
he was banished from his native country, Athens, for the murder of his nephew, Talus, who was his pupil and whose growing genius so excited his uncle's jealousy that he killed him. On his banishment, he was kindly received by Minos, uh, king of Crete, and adorned that country with many incomparable edifices and monuments of his skill. This ancient tale has been explained by the greatest of modern philosophers, Lord Bacon, as chiefly denoting the envy which strangely prevails amongst ex excellent artificers, for no kind of people are observed to be more implacable or implacable, implacable and destructively envious of one another than these, end quote. But I am inclined to imagine that a deeper truth lies hid in this, tradition old and dark, and that the murder by this mason of his pupil, which was imputed to his jealousy of superior skill, was perhaps the indignant punishment inflicted on the youth for divulging the secrets which he had learned under the instruction of his uncle. That's very possible, too. That's a good surmise right there. Hold on, I gotta see what's going on here. Oh, figures. It's the devil. <laughs> no, you know, junk calls and stuff, they come in. This time it was a junk text message. <sighs> All right, it was curious, too, it's not uh, remote from the history of the incident by... Uh, which is by some writers alleged to have occurred at the building of the temple, namely the murder of the master builder directing the execution of the works. It is, however, sufficient to refer to it as showing the extreme jealousy of the rivalry of other artists. Again, ego, you know, like I was just talking about. Um, but though I am not about to discuss minutely the question, of literal or historical proof of the truth of the tradition which refers our origin to the reign of Solomon and the events connected with the building of his famous temple I cannot of course exclude from my consideration all mention of his times and the sacred country where our organization is supposed to have commenced certain it is that Tyre and Sidon at the time of the erection of Solomon's temple were widely celebrated for the skill and excellence of their builders and masons. None were also a killed to hew wood like the Sidonians. And the buildings of those two most ancient cities were famed for their extent, beauty, and magnificence. The widest or wisest of mankind deigned to apply for assistance in executing the work which the Lord encouraged him to undertake. To the kindness of the neighboring heathen king who furnished him with the builders and masons. I have before observed on early prevalence of the separate organizations of the various crafts or trades. It was almost inevitable from the social nature of man and the tendency of like to like, in Tyre and Sudan, the craftsmen were associated by mysterious rites and ceremonies. Their merchants, you will recollect, were honorable princes and large traffickers. They carried their peculiar mysteries with their merchandise to Asia Minor and the Isles of Greece, where burning Sappho love and sung, where grew the arts of war and peace, and in return, with the spurious liberality which ever dis distinguished paganism, they readily admitted to worship of all the gods of the heathen. And the gorgeous and imposing ceremonies connected with their superstitions and mysteries, now in the distinct district of Asia Minor called Ionia, there existed, it would seem, even before the building of the temple, a very remarkable fraternity called the Dis Dianai uh, Alright. I always stumble over this word, Dionysian artificers. Okay, uh, they were an association of scientific men. Uh, some people pronounce it Dionysian. So it's Dionysian. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's other pronunciations. So, but we, you know, you've heard of them, uh, the Dionysian artificers, who possessed uh, exclusive privilege. Of uh, of erecting temples, theaters, and other public buildings in Asia Minor. They were a very numerous body and existed under the same name in Syria, including Tyre and Sidon, Persia, and India. 
The members were particularly eminent for their scientific acquirements, and they possessed appropriate words and signs by which they would rec- could recognize their brethren. And I think the Dionysians were uh, uh, um, students of uh, the school of Pythagoras, uh, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Originally, that's where they, you know, there's a group or two in between. But okay, so they were divided into lodges, and they were called by different names. They occasionally held the convivial, convivial meetings in houses erected and consecrated for the purpose, and each separate lodge was under the direction of a master, president, and warden. One each year, or once each year, they held a festival of peculiar splendor and pomp, and in their ceremonial observances, particular uh, utensils and implements were employed, uh, some of which closely resembled or were identical to those used by Freemasons. And as you can see, I mean, that's basically Freemasons take a lot of their traditions from uh, the school of uh, Pythagoras as well. And, and 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 their uh, organization. That's that's the word I'm looking for. Um, their rules for support of their poorer brethren and for secluding general concord and for the promotion of public and private virtues so exactly coincide with those of our brotherhood that writers, even the most hostile of the craft, do not hesitate to ascribe the Dionysian artists uh, their origin of Freemasonry, but see, I think the Dionysians came before Freemasonry, not Freemason, you know, so they were the origin of Freemasonry, I think is what he's trying to say, um, so in truth, these men were Freemasons, he says, basically, and, but they were, yeah, they were Masons, um, the scar- and scarcely any institution pretending to antiquity so nearly resembles its original foundation as the body of Freemasons. The rites, rules, and orders which have a known existence from some centuries agree with the Dionysian builders, uh, the parent stock from which they seem so clearly to have sprung, as even now to be almost identical with them. We may then be assured that at the building of the temple, the skillful masons and architects, whose age Solomon attained, did belong to the fraternity I've just referred to, and this pointed or gra- uh, granted or established and the traditional orient- origin of the reorganization of our even still illustrious and certainly very ancient order, becomes, if not certain, at least sufficiently probable to receive a willing assent to its truth. The Syrian artificers um, brought to Jerusalem their science and their mysteries from Jerusalem, the more illustrious city. These mysteries were propagated as from their original source. Um, This supposition receives additional confirmation from there being then in Judea a very peculiar society of Jews with which the Dionysian artificers would readily blend and associate. This body of Jews were called the Essenes, the Essenes. Their tenets and distinctive ceremonies bore considerable resemblance to those of Freemasons, and they too had traditions and duties connected with the temple. Conflicting opinions have been entertained by sacred and profane writers as to the origin of this singular sect, the Essenes. Excuse me, I had to take a drink there. Excuse me again. Now you don't realize until you start trying to read out loud for a long period of time, and, and especially if you're not a talker. I'm not a talker. A lot of people talk a lot, so maybe it wouldn't bother them. But sitting here reading constantly, man, my throat gets all dried out and screwed up. So please excuse the interruption here. All okay. right. <clears throat> reading aloud is not as easy as some people may think it is. <laughs> It took me a long time just to be able to, uh, to to kind of flow with it, you know what I mean? And uh, I st- I, as you can see, it doesn't always work. Uh, some days are better than others, folks. All right, but all concur in representing them as a very ancient association derived to most probably from the sum... Uh, now I have another cat. <laughs> Uh, fraternity which at the earliest period of history existed in the land of Judea. Okay, the learned uh, Scaliger 
whose research and acuteness are well known, uh, or Scalinger, some people say Scalinger, Scalinger, whatever, identifies this body with the Ascidians or the Cassidians uh, for the most noble knights of the temple who were conspicuous in the glorious times of the Maccabees and in many ages preceding. The strictest scrutiny was made into the character of every candidate for admission into this fraternity. If he was approved and accepted, a solemn oath was then administered to him, binding him never, even at the risk of life itself, to divulge the secrets of the order. And he was also instructed in the religious traditions derived from the earliest founders and members of the sect. <clears throat> Excuse me. They had particular signs by which they could recognize the brethren, and these bore a strong resemblance, as we learn, to those of Freemasons. They, too, were divided into lodges, and while they were honorably distinguished by the severe observance of the moral virtues, they were not neglectful of the social and convivial ties which give zest to life and bind mankind together by the kindly instincts of human affections. This fraternity, which is not confined to architects, though the Assidians or restorers of the temple held chief place amongst them, continued to flourish at the coming of our Savior, and until the fearful destruction of Jerusalem made the whole nation of Jews outcast, and even their very name by the word and reproach. How readily would these two fraternities, the Dionysian builders and the Essenes, blend and amalgamate amal amal and give rise to a new society combining features common to both. or but slightly modifications of their respectful peculiarities. This could scarcely fail to take place, and were, were history silent on all other mysterious organizations of men professing peculiar knowledge and distinctive doctrines, the origin of Freemasonry might, with some confidence, be attributed to, or perhaps more correctly be termed, a variety of the two fraternities of which I have thus given such general outline. Uh, some writers who would seek to connect everybody of peculiar eminence in ancient or modern history with Freemasonry, either directly or through the affinity of the Essenes, have labored to prove that St. John and St. Paul both belong to that sect of the Jews. They refer, for proof of the latter, to the emphatic use by the Apostle of the designated brother, designation brother, describing Cortus as a brother and not his brother. Other passages, too, might be adduced particularly or per, uh, particularly to those in which he sells of himself that he had lived a Pharisee after the straightest sect of his religion, which is, is argued were the Essenes. To the admonition that he had as a master builder laid the foundations others should take heed how they built on this improper superstructure. To this may be added one other passage, which from the metaphorical form of expression having now become habitual, is likely not to excite attention, but which I think was used by the apostle more literally, and as referring to the society of which both the writer and the person to whom his epistle was addressed were members. I allude to two Tim and blah 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 blah, blah uh, in which the apostle says, Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I need not, however, dwell and I'm, I'm just going to, I'm not even going to break all this down. I'm just going to say he's wrong. Okay? But you, know, you can discern that for yourself. But uh, the, the follows the uh, apostles of Christ were were what they were at the time that he recruited them. They were not secret society men. Freemasons, uh, masonry, and yes, they probably had a mason's guild uh, back then, and that include these artificers that he's referring to, like the Dionysians and the Essenes. However, they were not Freemasons back then. They did not call themselves Freemasons. The word Freemason does not come into uh, existence until 1717 when speculative Freemasonry was created and uh, uh, 
put into action. That is where Freemason, where Masons, operative Masons, became speculative Freemasons. So, I mean, although I, I, the guy's trying to give credit to tie, to tie in their their rituals and ceremonies into the ancient traditions of the artificers, uh, I can agree with that. Yes, but to go this far with it, no. Okay, so I'll continue on now and shut up. I need not, however, dwell more particularly on these points, which are rather topics for... Okay, I know, I gotta say, it's two more things. He said a brother, he meant a brother in Christ. He did not mean a brother in Freemasonry, uh, or in the Masons Guild, or whatever. And this, what he's talking about in Romans here, that this guy tries to say he was talking about a brother, as in the brotherhood brother. And eh, wrong. Okay, and the same with right here. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That has nothing to do with masonry, or Freemasonry, or artificers, for that matter. Uh, actually, it has something to do with Freemasonry in the words, in the speculative Freemasonry is about building the man. The temple that speculative Freemasonry is concerned with building is the temple of man. Okay, making man's temple a better place. The operative Freemasons, they made actual temples of stone. That's the difference. Okay. So, Pythagoras and uh, Pythagoras was, and granted, this is 1858, you know, their order had only been in order for about 100 years at this point, as speculative Freemasonries, Freemasons. Uh, so, um, I need not, however, dwell more particularly on these points, which are rather topics for curious argument than facts tending to the elucidation of our subject. And I shall proceed to notice one other society, philosophical or scientific in its pretensions, and like the other two just mentioned, the Essenes and the Dionysians, guarding the treasury of knowledge by secret mystery, Pyth Pythagoras. Pythagoras was a celebrated philosopher who lived in the 6th century before Christ. In the course of his extensive travels through Ionia, Syria, and Egypt, he had been initiated into all the famed mysteries of these kingdoms. It was a desire likely to arise in the mind of such a benevolent and reflective man to form a perfect system of philosophy by selecting from the systems into which he had been initiated whatever seemed peculiarly excellent and perhaps even improving on them. He settled in Cretonia in Italy and there about 550 BC founded a fraternity of disciples called after him the Pythagoreans. Okay, so before any, uh, so maybe the Dionysians were before Pythagoras. Um, I'll admit, I could, I could, I always get my timeline screwed up. I always do that. I, I'm really bad on it with the Mayans and the Aztecs. Um, getting those two switched around to, in the timeline of history. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of stuff to keep track of, people. So, before anyone was received into the number of his disciples, the most rigid inquiry was made into his moral character, and the result was favorable. He was then bound by a solemn engagement to conceal from the uninitiated the mysteries and knowledge which he might be instructed. The doctrines of charity of universal benevolence and the peculiar regard for the brethren of the order were inculcated on the new disciple. The members were distinguished by wearing white garments as emblems of purity and innocence, and they also had uh, particular words and signs by which they could recognize each other and correspond at a distance. They were advanced from one degree of knowledge to the other, and they were instructed in arts and sciences, united with ethics and a system of theology. And this instruction was communicated to the initiated by the ciphers and symbols. They were stri also strictly forbidden to commit their secrets to writing, and relied on this oral tradition only to preserve the knowledge of their mysteries. This philosophy, remembered now only by the familiar tenets of the transmigration of souls and the avoidance of beings, what? Exercise that. See why I get confused sometimes with these. What? Beans? Means. Okay. And avoidance of means. That should be an M. Okay. Means. Okay. Thank you. 
Exercise at one time much influence on the, on the nations where it flourished, and it was confessedly the means of greatly exalting the mind and moral character of the initiated. The noblest, wisest, and best of the nation were members, and those suffering much persecution, they were eminently distinguished uh, by the greatest fidelity in all their engagements and their strict performance of all moral duties. It will thus be observed how readily in more ancient mysteries the Illusionian and Essenian furnish the germ germs of another kindred system. Okay. How about gems? Furnish the gems of another in kindred system. Okay. And this is the more important germs. <laughs> uh, sorry. Okay. Hold on. I got to get my tit together here. This is more important as I cannot indeed shew the exact date or particular person first instituting Freemasonry. Well, I don't know why you can't shew that. It's a matter of a historical record. Maybe it wasn't in 1815. I imagine records were a little bit harder to keep back then. But only the existence of other systems naturally suggestive of it, and with which, in remote ages, it seems to have been blended. It would be impossible to trace accurately the successive stages of the transition or development of the mysteries of the Dionysian builders and Essenes and the disciples of Pythagoras into Freemasonry as now known in the existing for at least seven or eight centuries. What? <laughs> yeah, see, and when it's uh, existing for at least seven or eight centuries, uh, this is no. So, so they're obviously bound, you know, uh, prone to exaggeration. This guy is obviously doing this particular speech to really try to grandorize Freemasonry at the, at the time that this was given. So, transitions are like the growth of plants, gradual and almost imperceptible in daily accretions, remarkable only in the results, or like the, those pictures called dissolving views, in which the most min, minute attention cannot arrest the moment of the entire fading away of one picture or the substitution of another, often wholly dissimilar, uh, but it may not be without interest briefly to advert to some of, at least of the probable stages of this development. Now, yes, I agree with him as far as the influence of Freemasonry was all influenced by these different uh, groups that he's talking about, most definitely. It is in their history. And uh, when you read other books written by other authors, uh, it is also included in, in great details. Um, what we have here and it is a perfect example, though, of how People can get confused on the actual history of Freemasonry when you have certain Freemasons who have made publications, speeches, lectures, and publications like this that uh, stretch the truth a little bit and exaggerate and uh, generalize and all in the attempt or purpose of trying to grandeurize or legitimize uh, Freemasonry at the time. Uh, why they felt the need to try to legitimize themselves, I guess, in the upcoming early years of Freemasonry, and they were trying to recruit men into their ranks, um, they had to propose themselves as a, uh, a higher calling. And so, thus, speeches like this were made. Okay, it is a mistake into any into which many are led from the computation of time, from the coming of our Lord to suppose that a sudden change of habits and customs and of religion was produced by that great event. The existence of our world we divide into two eras, that before and that following Christ coming upon earth, and the latter we call confusedly Christian times, but this is indeed an error. The spread of the gospel was not either immediate or rapid. It was more like the morning stealing on the night and the melting of the darkness. The centuries were required to change and inveterate habits, manners, customs, and 
religion of the nations. Even where the pure gospel of the Lord was first preached, and during three centuries the new religion was slowly spreading amidst many trials and frequent fiery persecutions of its members, the heathen mysteries were ordinarily celebrated in the vast dominions of the Roman Empire. The paganism was the national form of worship until Theodosius the Great, and about the commencement of the 5th century prohibited and tried wholly to extinguish the pagan pagan theology. It is, however, probable that the mysteries were in many places secretly continued in spite of the sev several edicts of the emperor, and we are informed that even in Athens, the scene of St. Paul's great preaching, they were practiced so late as the 8th century of our Christian era. The outcast Jews and the recent Christian converts had also nearly the same motives for adopting some proportions of the Essenian and Dionysian uh, or similar mysteries. Both Jews and Christians were persecuted, and it was essential to their safety to practice the rites and ceremonies of their res respective religions in secret. The Christians were often obliged to resort, like the prophets of old, to holes and caves in the earth, and they had a church of the living amongst the tombs of the dead in the catacombs of Rome. How useful, then, would the adoption of secret signs, passwords of recognition to be to these persecuted sects? And how probable was it that through disarmed suspicion they outwardly adopted the ceremonies of paganism in order to practice in security their Christian worship? Without the intrusion or espial of the jealous persecuting multitude. In this was I am inclined to think that the spirit leading and the ideas of Freemasonry were adopted from the heathen mysteries by the early Christians. They were indeed then termed churches but for many centuries were more like lodges of Freemasons than we can now well believe. From the university of the true religion in our own times and with the natural tendency of the human mind, they adopted whatever in the old mysteries was not incongruous to, into the new world uh, and, and to the crown. Apparently inscrutable religion to the crown's apparently inscrutable religion. But there prevailed in Western Europe two very singular secret associations with which the Eastern might and the intercourse between East and West increased, readily incorporate in the form of new society modification of the old, having many external and obvious points of resemblance and exhibiting also many traits of a similar spirit and origin. These were the juridical religion prevalent in Gaul and Britain. The Druids and the 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 Femerect, or secret tribunals of of Westphalia and Germany. Uh, the Druid Druid religion was of great antiquity, and was a corruption, most probably of pure worship mixed with the doctrines and practices derived from the Illusionian mysteries and other ancient rites. This is supposed to have been introduced into Western Europe about 600 years B.C., but continued in Britain for many centuries after the Christian era. Uh, the Femigrite is said to have uh, been instituted in the 9th century and continued in full vigor to the middle of the 15th. I need not dwell particularly on either one of these societies. Their existence in any country would naturally prepare the mind to receive with favor rites and ceremonies analogous to those and with which they might usefully be cannot, could be usefully combined. And I will you know, just mention the reminder that just recently uh, Great Britain's uh, whatever you know, authority, government, um, whatever the hell they call themselves over there, um, a parliament or something, I don't know, uh, decided that uh, to reinstate uh, Druidism or the, the Druid religion as an official and uh, a recognized religion of the state. Or, you know, recognized by the state, which means is of the state, same difference. <clears throat> it will thus be seen that those mysterious associations to which I have more particularly invited your attention and which existed even anterior to the building of Solomon's temple continued to flourish to the 8th century of our era and there existed contem contemporaneously other fraternities having a certain family likeness with which the more ancient might readily be incorporated and as it were 
fused, and shortly after this date, the Fraternity of Freemasons became a known and powerful organization. The potentates or potentates of Europe, potentates, potentates of Europe, including popes, conferred on the Fraternity of Freemasons most important privileges, and allowed them to be governed by laws, customs, and ceremonies peculiar to their order. We are told that the association was composed of men of all nations remarkable for their skill and practice of architecture. It spread throughout Central Europe, and the principles of the order were introduced into Scotland about the year 1140. About the same period, the practice and doctrines of Freemasonry was introduced into England and the, uh, and the Brethren in 1410 received a charter of incorporation by the name and style of the Freemasons. That name and style we bear are justly proud of our historical identity and our more ancient and honored incorporated brethren. Okay, so. And now I trust it may appear sufficiently plain to any brother who has attended to the cursory and necessarily imperfect notices which I have given the ancient and scientific um, and mysterious fraternities. So he's talking about operative Freemasons still. And when he's talking about these time periods here, he's still talking about operative Freemasons, not speculative Freemasonry. Um, just, to, just to be clear on that. Because there, there's, a, there's a difference. There was a, there's a, there was a change um, after what we call the Middle Ages or the Dark Ages, um, which the time period he's talking about uh, the 1140s and stuff. You know, that's 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 way back there. And here I messed up my whole screen. Look at that. All right, let's try to get this right here. So, and now I trust it may appear sufficiently plain to any brother who has attended the cursory and necessarily imperfect notices which I have given to the ancient scientific mysterious fraternities, not only that they bore the same resemblance to Freemasonry, but in truth that Freemasonry is a direct descendant, the traditional offspring, corporate successors of those pre-Christian societies. The Essenes, the Dionysian artificers, habits, climate, race, descent, the gradual revelation through the ages, um... The influence of a newer and pure religion would suffice to alter slightly the character and impair somewhat the historical evidence of this identity or fusion, but sufficient yet remains to attest that the most interesting fact to prove that we, even in the present position of the craft, hold communion with the most glorious spirits of antiquity. No, in, in other words, and this is one way to put it, but in other words, Freemasonry stole all the habits, secrets, ideas, traditions, etc. of the Essenes, the Dionysians, the Pythagoreans, all that. Then they molded it into their own form of a craft, right? And now this guy is basically saying that uh, because we have all this, this is where we derive from. Right? This is, this is, this, he's trying to use it as a badge of honor instead of really what it is you just took a whole bunch of other ideas from antiquity put them all together and formed your own organization right that's that's the bottom line of it so who leave where they have passed in a shine of light time does not permit me to full up this outline by the details of the minute and striking coincidences between Freemasonry and the ancient mysteries to which I have averted. My object, indeed, was rather to present you with a general sketch of these nearly forgotten fraternities to exhibit only those leading features and the prevailing motives active on the human mind from which all originated and rapidly to trace through our Christian era the decline of the old and the rise of the modern and more known system of Freemasonry into which the ancient has been changed. I trust, however, that this rapid and cursory outline of the origin of Freemasonry may have awakened an interest in the minds of some of my brethren as to the evidences of the great antiquity of our order. That they may see the antiquity of your order. How is it antique? Because you took a bunch of antique ideas 
and that makes your order antique no it doesn't you can try to justify it I mean this is a good article folks don't get me wrong I mean he's right about where the origins come from and where the traditions and ceremonies and a lot of the ideologies come from um, and the, he's right about the reasons for it but he is doing his best in this uh, presentation to like I said grandarize uh, Freemasonry and probably at the time that's what they needed to do to try to uh, bolster their numbers and keep those that had joined uh, feeling like like it is right here that a feeling like pride of noble lineage and untarnished ancestry may elevate their minds and induce them to inspire to elevate the order also so that consideration at once deservedly enjoyed then indeed might we boast that f boast that freemasonry was the humble handmaid of our pure religion <laughs> and thus prove its identity with those associations of men who in dark ages were the day stars from on high right the day stars the the light bringers from on high and have visited this earth and endeavored to walk uprightly by the dim light still retained of the religious impressions originally implanted and left as a guide and who in the centuries long gone by kept the truth so firm of old when our forefathers worshipped stocks and stones sticks and stones i think that's what they're supposed to stay <laughs> the spirit which animated them to struggle earnestly to free themselves from the corrupting influence which debased the ancient polytheism and which originated those mysterious societies still exist the association associations organized by these earnest-minded men for the improvement of their fellows as moral and intellectual beings have fallen into oblivion but in the system of Freemasonry derived, as I trust, has been shown from their noble efforts to elevate the thoughts and feelings of mankind, their spirit still lives and flourishes, combines with and even ministers to Christianity. What? How wonderful is this connection of the past? So now, see, in that here in this representation too, he's trying to connect all these... Uh, uh, sciences is, and or, or, and artificers and, and their knowledge uh, combines and ministers to Christianity. How wonderful is this connection of the past and of the present? See, now you have to take into consideration the individuals who write these things. I mean, granted, these are from Freemasonic sources. These are from Freemasons themselves, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But that doesn't mean that, that that Freemason may very well be a very deluded individual, um, like Manly P. Hall was. He was he was a genius, but he was a crazy genius, right? I mean, the dude was loopy. The dude was crazier than a loon. But anyway, um, I digress. I, I getting off subject here a little bit. But you see, you must take in consideration the people that are writing this uh, at the time. And the time that they're writing it to. The motivations behind their purposes. So how wonderful that even the passions, prejudice, interests that sway meanest. The meanest being, the weak touch that moves the finest nerve in one human brain. Causes the faintest thought becomes a link in the great chain of nature. Yeah, okay, whatever that's supposed to mean. So this is printed, this is Dublin. Printed by Poe and Briarly, 42 Mabbitt Street. Um... Freemasons Female Orphan School? Really? Really? You trust a bunch of old perverted men to run a, a female... In the, uh, wow, I forgot this part was on the end of this. What is this? Burlington Place, Upper Baggett Street, Dublin. Instituted A.D. 1795 under the patronage of R.W. the Grand Lodge of Ireland. His Grace the Duke of Leinster. John... Uh, yeah... Sounds like a nice place for a bunch of pedophiles. In this institution, the daughters of deceased Freemasons are dieted, lodged, I mean fed. Is that what you mean? They're fed, they're fooded, <laughs> lodged, closed, and educated. It is supported by the contributions of the land, Grand Lodge of Ireland, the private lodge of the Brethren generally, and internal arrangements of the institution are most kindly superintended by a committee of ladies okay well we hope so 
Subscriptions and donations will be received by the Vice President's Board, blah, 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 Freemasons Hall. Ah, well, that was enjoyable, wasn't it, folks? Thank you for joining me. Um, <clears throat> some are rougher than others. <laughs> <laughs>